there was a lot of evolution and revolution that happened in uh, Indian classical music till the 11th century when uh, Muslims invaded our country. And during that time, a prominent musician called as Amir Khusro, he made a lot of change in the scene of Indian classical music. So he had learned Sufi and Kawali Sangeet from his guri, guru. And he tried to mix those forms with the existing Indian classical music. And during that time, Dhrupad Gaiki used to be very prominent. Dhrupad is more of a rigid structure of singing. Like uh, most of the most part of the recital is only alap, and the rest of the part is the bandish or the song based on that track. So he was the main person behind the origin of Khayal Gaiki. But even after then, the you know this. Uh, it didn't really spread out or become very prominent, the form of Khayal Gaiki. It was only when during the 18th century, uh, during that time, a lot of singers used to sing in courts of emperors and the period of Mughal Empire and all that. So there used to be uh, a king called as uh, Muhammad Shah Rangile. And in his court, there used to be a person, a musician who used to play. His name was Niyamat Khan. So once what happened is uh, he was made to sit behind the singers while performing. And he really took it to his heart. He didn't like it. He thought that I'll develop this form of Khayal Gaiki. He'd practiced a lot and developed it. And he made sure that he teaches this form to two students. And those two students sung this Khayal Gaiki at many places. And this is when the form really spread out to a lot of places. And that time, Muhammad Shah came to know about this form of Sangeet, and he invited those two singers to sing in his court. So, and he made them his court singers. And that time, he asked them, Ki, who's your guru? So he came to know that Niyamat Khan was his guru. So he, asked, he again asked Niyamat Khan ji to come to his court and he gave, them, gave him the respectable position to sit among the singers. And Niyamat Khan is none other than those who have learned Hindustani classical music, Sadaranga. Okay, Sadaranga is a person who has written a lot of bandishes or songs in Khayal Gaiki. And you will find his name in the Antara section of all the Khayal songs that he has written. So, there has been a lot of changes and improvisations in uh, this beautiful form of Khayal Gaiki. So now we'll move on to the main section, the main techniques that we are going to learn in Khayal, Khayal Gaiki. I would like to invite Mukta. Thank you, Arjuna. Um, I thought when she will ask you what is Khayal, someone would say, oh, take taking care of someone, like khayal rakhna types, you know? But okay, good that you said thought, especially my students, <laughs> that's great. So khayal means imagination. It's a poetry composed in a particular rag and set to a particular tal. The subjects for the poetry are mostly devotion, love, separation, and nature. So it's mostly, um, it's not only about the poetry, actually, because uh, when it comes to bada khayal, the poetry doesn't really matter that much because it's so slow that you won't understand what exactly they are saying also. So it's all about the expression of the rag. How you express that rag, how you uh, make combinations of the notes when you're singing those particular words, that that what uh, matters in Khayal Gaiki. In Chota Khayal, yes, they have all these subjects and they compose nice tunes and uh, then they improvise it. So that's what Khayal Gaiki is. Uh, main components of a khayal is just like any other song, which is melody, tal, and pad. Melody uh, is, of course, a tune, but in khayal gaiki, there are rules and regulations. So you can't really uh, keep slowing your melody uh, at all the rags, and you know you cannot have that much fun. But you can be in the framework of the rag and then create the melody, and uh, which is also set to a particular tal. So um, unlike Western uh, music, you can't really change time signature or play around the rhythm like that. But 
Even if it's 4-4, uh, for example, you can play around within the tal and make it more like happening and uh, playful. And pad is the text of the song. So it's bandish or chota khayal or bada khayal or any text which is called as pad. So these are the three main uh, things that you, you will have to learn when you are learning the khayal gaiki. But this is just the beginning. So next comes the improvisation. So these are the types of the khayal. One is bada khayal, another is chota khayal. Um, before that, let's learn about the speed, that means lay, rhythm. So there are three types of rhythm. One is vilambit lay, another is madhya lay, and third one is drut lay. Vilambit is very slow. You, you might sleep because it, it would go like one, two, <laughs> so it might go like that. That's Vilambit Lai. Madhya Lai is like a walking pace. One, two, three, four, like that. And Drut is faster. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that. So it depends on uh, which khayal you are singing. Your, your Lai would decide that. If you are singing Vilambit Lai, that means if your composition is set to Vilambit Lai, which is really, really slow, then it can be, it, it will be a Bada Khayal. And if it's a madhya or drut lay, then it will be a chota khayal. Uh, just for fun, like bada khayal is like very long. That's mean, that means it's bada. And chota khayal is pretty short compared to bada khayal. That's why it's chota. <laughs> okay? So uh, chota khayal usually follows bada khayal. So when uh, a musician would perform bada khayal, which would uh, go around 40 minutes or so, and after that, he would sing the same rag, but a chota khayal presentation, and uh, it would be around 10, 15 minutes. But then that's the techie part of the, uh, the whole presentation. Let's um, go to the actual form of khayal gaiki. So no matter what bada khayal or chota khayal, every, uh, there are many gharanas in Hindustani classical uh, uh, music. A uh, few examples I could give you, Gwalior Gharana, Indor Gharana, Kirana Gharana. So all these Gharanas would have their specific style of singing. One Gharana might have a lot of Swarvistar, like very slow alaps. Other Gharana would have a specific kind of Taans. The, these are the, like their styles, and it doesn't really matter which is awesome and which is not, because everything is really good. Um, so let's go to the form. First is Swarvistar or you can also call it prarambhik alap. Then comes the sthai. Um, in easier way, I can say, if, if you learn a song, the mukhra of the song, which is the first two lines of any song, is sthai. But in classical music, they call it sthai. Then comes the sthai alap. Then they go to uh, tar saptak. Tar saptak again, mandra saptak, madhya saptak, and tar saptak. These are the octaves. And while improvising, the singer or the musician would go to the tar saptak, reach the higher sa, and then go to antara alaps. And then uh, the musician would complete the antara after singing the alap. At, that means the poetry. And antara is, you can say, a verse of a song. So uh, he will finish the antara. Then the musicians would uh, increase the tempo a bit. So from one, two, so they, they, they can do like one, two, three, four, which is not really madhya lai, but a little faster than the uh, vilambit lai. And they will start singing sargam or playing sargam. Sargam, as you can see, it's saregama padhanisa, but again, you have to be in the rag and then uh, sing that sargam. We'll also learn about it later. Then there is bol alap, Tan and bol ala, bol tan. So all this like depends on the gharana or their guru, how they have taught the uh, the uh, musicians and how they have uh, designed it, the presentation. It doesn't really matter if someone is singing bol ala in the beginning or bol tan uh, at the end or anything. Like the form mostly is like this, but some gharanas would have different styles. Follows the order correctly, like the order that is shown. So Gwalior Gharana is very disciplined in that way. 
Kirana Gharana would have uh, small murkis in between, and they will sustain a particular note like for a really long time. That's their speciality. So in the form of Khayal Gaki, first thing was Swarvistar or Prarambhikala. Singing the structure of the rag without any rhythm, it is a presentation of the development of the notes and the way the rag is built. At this stage, the musician presents the expression and the framework of the rag. So again, like a khayal, it's, it's their thinking about the rag. If there's a framework, the painting needs to be done, and then a singer would paint it. The frame is done. You cannot go out of this frame. But how would you paint it? Which colors would you use? Which combinations would you use? That is about khayal gaiki. In Swaravistar, mm, it's mostly done with akar. Akar is instead of sa re ga ma pa, they would sing ha, right? So akar would have the um, combinations of the notes, which are again in the rag. And it's, it's very slow uh, in the beginning, but it can be faster. They can have some uh, alankars, which is the stepwise like combination of the notes. And it's, it's built in the rag. It doesn't have any tal. So it can go slow, fast, however the singer wants. It's the soul of Hindustani classical music. OK, everyone is understanding or they're OK? Understanding, OK, great. So Swarvistar is done. Then the main poetry starts, the sthai of the khayal. The first half of the com uh, composition, which is mostly composed in the mandra or madhya sapta. This is the explanation for the saptaks. Mandra is lower uh, octave, madhya is mid, and tar is higher octave. So I won't be that great, but this is madhya sapta. That's mandra sapta. And that's tar sapta. So this is all about uh, like how the singer would sing the alaps. It's um, like it's unfolding of the rag. And it can be done directly from the higher notes, or they can go slow from the mandra saptak to higher saptak. So sthai is basically composed mostly in mandra and madhya saptak because it's the beginning of the poetry. It's Again, it's very slow. So you might not understand every word in the sthai. But um, this is the way it's composed, and it expresses the poetry or the rag. Next is thai alap. So first one was swarvistar, and those were also the alap, but without, without the tal. These ones would have the tal. Let's read it. Alaps are the improvisations done by the lead musician keeping the beat. Tal is necessary, and it's very important. These improvisations are strictly composed within the framework of the rag, and every gharana would have different styles of singing the alap. Like we said about Gwalior and Kirana, they will have different styles. But in this, if you have no knowledge of tal, you're done. You can't go ahead. Even if you are a good singer or a great voice or anything, but if you don't know the tal, how it works, and where you should catch your song, then you're done. <laughs> so no matter what combinations you do, no matter how well you sing, you, you have to focus on all these things about the tal, sur, don't go out of the rag, follow the poetry, and blah, blah, blah. There's so many things, right? But in that, tal is also a very important thing. Um, if there are vilambit tals, right? Like vilambit lay tals. So you really have to calculate like one, do. So you really have to keep thinking, OK, where am I supposed to start? So that I will come on the sum. Sum is the most important thing in the tal, because uh, you have to come on the first beat, which is sum. So that's how you can do the alaps. You can keep singing the rag in the with the tal, but you have to keep a track where you are in the tal. Then slowly, the singer would go to Antara's alap. Like I said, Antara, Sthai was composed in Madhya and Mandra Sapta. Antara is mostly composed in the higher octave. So the, uh, the singer should actually like start from the bass and then start the building up, right? So the, the singer or musician 
they would start from the lower octave alaps, madhya octave alaps, and then they will reach the higher sa. And that's when they can start antara. Instead of sthai, they will start singing antara now, which is the verse in, in Western music. So antara is the second half of the khayal, which is mostly composed in the tar sapta. Antara descends back to sthai. Antara alaps are just like sthai alaps, but in the tar sapta. It doesn't really mean you have to only sing in tar saptak, but use most of the tar saptak notes because your antara goes um, upwards. And then when you're done with antara alaps, you finish the antara, like the poetry, and come back to sthai. And then you speed up. Uh, then you speed up the tal, and then the sargam would start, right? So sargam is the next part. Sargam is the combination of the swars in, in the chosen rag, sung in a particular way with the rhythm. After singing the sthai and antara, the musicians speed up the rhythm a bit and sing the sargam. It's mostly like, I cannot say hip hop, but it's, uh, it's playing with the rhythm. So, sa, 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 re, sa, sa, re, ga, 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 ma, 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 ba, like that. So the tal is going on. You cannot leave the rag. You have to choose only the swars which are there in the rag. And you have to play around with the rhythm. You also have to come back to sum by catching your sthai. Never forget that. So sargam is just singing the swars. No akar, no words. Only swars. OK? You're there? OK. <laughs> and there is tan. Who loves tan in my students? <laughs> Good. <laughs> so singing faster notes with, with the same lay, and tan can have two or more notes per beat. Instead of um, singing slow alabs and developing the rag slowly, now you are at the sargam stage, where the, the speed is pretty happening. right? After that, you have to be even faster or sing faster. So those tans, tans is um, singing two or more notes in the same beat. And that is very technical. Uh, you have to know the rag, tal, and your riyas should be really good to sing these tans. Um, tan is, um, is not really expressional, but they are very technical part of the uh, Khayal Gaiki presentation. And it, it needs a lot of practice to, to do the good tans. And um, yeah, so after tans, we go to bol alaps or bol tans. Again, the structure, the form is not the same for every musician. They can change here and there and do the, uh, like change the order. But uh, bol alaps and bol tans are actually the same alaps and tans. Not the same, but uh, the form is the same. Uh, and they would sing it with the words, with the help of the words. They won't do akar, which is ah, but they would actually sing the words from the poetry and start developing the alaps or tans with the same tal. So um, this is uh, one one of the example that we have chosen because uh, vilambit ek tal is very common when it comes to badakhyal. And uh, compared to other tal, I feel that's more easier to understand. So introduction to the tal, we have ek tal. OK, the first of all, <laughs> these things are kind of wrong for this presentation because we changed the system. So um, really sorry for that. Matra means beat. OK, sum is the first beat of any tal. Khand is partitions, the, these straight lines that you can see. Those are the groups of beats. So those are khand. Tali is clap, as everyone know. And khali is rest. Khali is, what is khali in Hindi? Empty, yeah, so there's no clap. That's why it's khali. That's, that's the easier way to remember what's khali. Um, so there are 12 beats, and the tal goes like dhin, dhin, dhage, tirakit, tu. Na, kat, ta, dhage, tirakit, dhi, na, and dhi. Yes. So that's, that's very important to come back to the sum. And um, Arjuna, can you show the hand? Can you 
Komm hier. Okay. Dhin, dhin, dhage, terakita, tu, na, kat, ta, dhage, terakita, dhin, na, dhin. Yes, so it's basically one, two. Can you show? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and one. That's how the tal is. Are you guys interested in doing this with us? Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to say um, one, two, three, four. What are the things that you would show me on your hands? Like one, two, three, four. Correct. Any, any finger is fine, actually. And then again, uh, five, six, seven, eight. And nine, ten is different. Nine. 10, but 11, 12, and 1. Great. So can you do this? I'll just count with you guys. Okay, 1, 2, 3, go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 1. Yay, that's good. That's good. L let's play it on the Aitabla Pro. For the first few matras, there's only one uh, element or shabd, you can say, dhin, dhin. But on the third and the fourth, third has two, dha, ge. Okay. So you, we have to equally divide that beat when we say it. And the fourth matra has tira, kita. Yeah, so four. So equally divide the fourth, the fourth uh, matra when we say it. So it goes dhin, dhin. Dha, ge, tira, kita, tu, na, kat, ta, dha, ge, tira, kita, dhi, na. Listen to the sound of the tabla and you'll find that it's really matching with what's written over here. It's nothing but the bowl of the tabla. Let's do a slower version of this. Yeah. Okay, there's Vilambit and there's something called as Ati Vilambit. So. <laughs> okay. But when the tabla is played, you can really make the differentiation.
was the sound of the uh, tabla when it's played. So you know, you must be able to identify ki which part of the tal is going on just by listening to the sound of the tabla. So a thorough uh, riyaz and you know practice in this is required. by singing like one e like one of the everything so i would start uh, with um, swar vistar of rag yaman my students are laughing so i would start from swar vistar uh, and i will sing one line of the sthai for you to understand how you sing the sthai and then i would sing one alap or uh, you know you would understand sargam bol alap or whatever let's see Swarvis that is just the alap from this scale. Some granas would start the thai right after this, and um, it's totally up to the musicians how they want to do it. But this is swarvas that everyone got an idea, yeah? Are you liking this? Great, great. Let's go to the poetry um, part of the composition. Yeah.
Thank you so much. So I showed you each uh, uh, form, ka, like uh, each step, ka one thing, like one improvisation. I hope you understood how. So whatever I presented, again, it's very basic. It's nothing like Ustads or Pandits. But it's for us to understand this, right? I'm also going to play uh, later one recording where I will tell you this, this, this step. This is this step. And then your mind is going to be blown. So <laughs> be ready. But before that, after um, the Bada Khyal presentation, now Archana is going to sing Chota Khyal presentation for you. And she is going to sing. Oops, Rag Bhopali, hold on. is komal and while going up the aroha dha is not there but while coming down all the suras are there so there is something called as jati in a rag jati is nothing but the number of suras you have in those particular rag that particular rag so since we have six suras in aroha and seven while coming down it's called 
shadav sampurna shadav is if you have six varas and sampurna is if you have sampurna as in every all the varas okay so <laughs>
the next rag is Puriya Dhanashri, and we are not going to sing it, but someone awesome is going to sing for us. Uh, we are going to play a recording uh, sung by Ustad Rashid Khan, and it's an amazing treat for everyone. And at uh, every step, we are going to show you the slide, what part they are singing, and then you would understand, ooh, this is how you sing it. So <laughs> for that, Purya Dhanashri is Aroha Vroha this. And if you want to write down or make notes, please do, because then we can um, discuss some other day. Can you play this?
um, this was not the full presentation of this track because we don't have that much time. Uh, I had to, we had to edit it a little bit and uh, uh, we tried to gi give you all the steps that we discussed in this Bada Khyal presentation and Chota Khyal. Did you like it? Yes. Great. Now that you understand a little bit uh, because of this presentation, are you going to enjoy it more? Like, I mean, do you understand more now, right? It's not like I, I, I don't like the people who don't know the form and then they criticize it. Like, if I don't know trans, I cannot say that I hate trans. Like, who are you to criticize trans, right? You don't know. You don't even know it. But now that you know a little bit of the khayal gaiki, try to hear it and just listen to it. Keep listening to it because then you would understand how and. Uh, how it is possible to sing like this and it's an ocean you cannot really get it in in this life next life maybe <laughs> but at least try to appreciate try to listen to the rag and uh, understand how they are connected to your film songs you can do that if you like film songs anybody can tell me any film song which was based on this scale is this rag i mean puriya dhanashri uh huh. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. And here there is uh, Akanksha is saying, "Hi Rama, ye kya hua?" That's also correct. So, um, Devdas. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. So if you feel like, no, man, I cannot take one and a half hour of Hindustani classical music, it's fine. Listen in parts, you know. Listen just to Swaravistar and then maybe switch to film music, which is based on that rang. Do, uh, do research which rags have which film songs. Or in film songs, they have liberty to go out of the rag, but this is pure, pure rag. Rules and restrictions, but still, see how much fun we had today. You got to know something new, and we really, really enjoyed uh, presenting this in front of you. You're a really great audience. Thank you so much. Uh, and I think we are done here. And any anything that you would like to say about this presentation or anything that it's not compulsory, so <laughs> just asking. You enjoyed it, right? Great, great. Thank you so much, Aditya. Uh, for the mic and all the help, and thanks, Arjuna. You want to say something? Uh, yeah, it was a great audience, and in fact, uh, for us to prepare for this presentation, we ourselves learned a lot, like the history, and those things weren't really known to us. And yeah, there's this is as she said, it's very vast, and you can start with Chota Khyal, for that matter. Directly jumping onto Bada Bada Khyal would be a bit too much to start with if you have not learned music, Hindustani classical. You can start with Chota Khyal, start learning, listening to different types, different tracks of different performers. And then slowly, once you understand the structure of Chota Khyal, the rag, then you'll start an enjoying the Bada Khyal of that rag. Unless and until you don't know that rag and you don't know how to enjoy it, you know, you won't really feel like listening to Bada Khyal. Once you know it, once you are like very keen to listen to it, then you'll enjoy that track. Like why has been listening the same thing again and again? Why is it not really doing that? He is taking uh, care of the rag, he is playing around the rag a little bit and catching the songs in the perfect beat, but saying the thought in a different way. Like, hey, I want to go uh, to the end of the Oh, maybe I should go to the end. Thank you so much.